Why coaches and clinicians struggle with nervous system regulation and what to do about it. I've helped over 25,000 practitioners and students integrate nervous system frameworks and resources into their practice. And I've seen a few things along the way. What I've learned is that coaches and clinicians need five things in place in order to give successful nervous system regulation to their clients. Number one, trauma sensitive sequencing. Number two, the integration of bottom-up with top-down regulation. Number three, neuroplasticity needs to take place in the implicit memory system. Number four, clear communication of these complex concepts. And number five, the ability to track and measure the nervous system. And they need all five of these in place in order to have success with helping their clients recover from chronic and traumatic stress. So let's take a look at each one and how you can implement this into your own practice. The number one thing that you need if you wanna help your clients with nervous system regulation is trauma sensitive sequencing. You know that nervous system work is powerful. Maybe this kind of work is what drew you to helping others in the first place. But when you try to talk to your clients about it, their eyes glaze over or you notice there's some resistance. You find yourself stumbling over these explanations, which creates this cycle of self-doubt within you and you notice more resistance in your clients. The real problem here is that you're missing a clear system. Without a detailed framework to follow, you'll find that you're left wondering, am I doing too much? Am I doing too little? Am I going too fast? You find yourself anxious about what to do if your client freezes, shuts down, or starts to move into more activation. And then you hear the self-doubt. Am I qualified for this? Do I know what I'm doing? Should I refer this person on? Then your client sense your hesitation and they become less willing to trust the process. This creates a cycle where nervous system interventions feel forced rather than natural. When you understand the neurobiological hierarchy of nervous system healing, you will automatically use the right intervention at the right time. This approach recognizes that the nervous system heals in a specific order, just in the same way as it develops. And this is also aligned with the principles of neuroplastic healing. When you understand this hierarchy, you stop swimming upstream against your client's neurobiology and you actually start working with it. So in nervous system terms, this foundation consists of the sensory systems. Number one, the vestibular system. So this is things like balance and spatial orientation. Number two, proprioception. So being aware of your body position in space. And number three, this internal body awareness. Now, these are the foundations. And just like a house, you need those stable foundations before you put the walls up. So that could be things like emotional processing or before you put the roof on. And you might imagine this like top down interventions or looking at thoughts, beliefs or mindset. You can't build emotional regulation if those foundations aren't stable. And you can't change someone's thought processes if they're not stable either. So we need to start with those foundational sensory systems first, and this is what trauma sensitive sequencing honors. The second reason is that they don't integrate bottom up processes with top down processes. For so many coaches and clinicians, there is a piece of the puzzle missing. So just imagine you have a client who walks into your office or your studio and they have lower back pain. And once you start talking, you realize that they are stuck in sympathetic overdrive. They can't sleep, they feel anxious, maybe they're having digestive issues as well. Now you know the link between dysregulation, the vagus nerve, trauma and inflammation. You're well aware of the science, but what you're struggling with is a framework to help this person, not only with this presenting symptom, but to also help them get to the root cause, that nervous system dysregulation. The critical piece of the puzzle that's missing is that you don't have the complete framework that bridges the bottom up 
body-based interventions with the top-down cognitive approaches. Perhaps you sense that your hands-on manual therapy really still needs that top-down nervous system education that can help your clients fully recover from chronic and traumatic stress. Or perhaps you know that for your clients who are stuck in freeze or burnout, that the top-down isn't enough. Either way, there is still that piece of the puzzle that's missing. Without the complete framework that follows the neurobiological hierarchy, you're left trying to piece all these different pieces of information together that you've learned. And within your sessions, you find yourself feeling overwhelmed and confused. And yes, your clients pick up on that too. This scenario actually plays out daily across many modalities, whether you work as a massage therapist, a health professional, a coach, a counselor, or a therapist. So many times what I hear from my students before they come to our programs is that there has been this fundamental piece of the puzzle missing and nervous system work provides the gap that bridges the brain and the body. And it makes sense if you think about it. A lot of the work we're doing is targeting the vagus nerve, which cranial nerves function as a bridge between the brain and the body. So this is the beauty of nervous system work. It can feel that missing piece that you need to help your clients right throughout their healing journey. The third reason why coaches and clinicians struggle with nervous system regulation is because neuroplasticity is not taking place in the implicit memory system. The hack your nervous system messaging is everywhere. With promises of healing through just one breath, through cold plunges or through supplement stacks. And it's not to say that these can't be helpful for your clients or your patients. They certainly can play a role in supporting them. But the wellness industry framing nervous system work as hacks actually misrepresents the true work that it takes to create change and cover from chronic and traumatic stress. Let's get a bit nerdy here. True transformation happens through what we call predictive coding. So our brain and nervous system operate as prediction machines. They take what's happened in your past experiences and compare today to that experience. Whether we're aware of it or not, every experience we have is getting encoded into our survival brain's implicit memory system. And this is outside conscious awareness. So it's not when you remember your favorite holiday or your fifth birthday. Those are the explicit memories. What we're talking about here is the implicit memory system that is how you might respond automatically to something. The way that our brain and nervous system work is that they make predictions about what's going to happen based on your past experiences. And each of these experiences gets encoded deep into your survival brain through the implicit memory system. And these memories are those deep body-based emotional responses that come about when you get triggered by something today. So these can be motor responses like bracing, collapsing, freezing. It can also be through our digestive system. It can be a pounding heart. It might be we feel that rush of adrenaline. Now, in order to change this so that recovery happens, we actually need neuroplastic healing to happen in that implicit memory system. This is especially changing the cerebellum, the basal ganglia and areas in the brainstem. Now, that takes much more than hacks. Lasting change requires creating new sensory experiences that will directly challenge the old stored predictions. When this happens, there is an update in the implicit memory system. Now, this is a little bit like doing an update to your iPhone and it works in new ways. When you update your implicit memory system, your body will respond in new ways to triggers today. If somebody's nervous system learned to become hypervigilant to specific sensory experiences, whether that's sounds, smells, things they see, or even relational dynamics, transformation needs to address those exact same sensory channels with new experiences where people feel safety and trust. 
Repetition is equally crucial and it requires patience from both us and our clients. Neuroplasticity doesn't happen by a single breakthrough moment. There's no one and done when it comes to the nervous system. Just like you might fill a bucket with water one drop at a time, each time you create this new sensory experience, it's having a cumulative effect. These small updates compound into significant shifts that will lead to nervous system regulation. This process requires a personalized, nuanced approach that doesn't come with the intensity promised by quick fixes. It requires the steady, ongoing repetitions that allow implicit memories to be updated. What we truly need to teach our clients is that they're not going to be calm all the time, but just like going to the gym, they can train their own nervous system to become more flexible, adaptable and resilient. Just like you couldn't hack your body to become strong or be ready for a marathon, we wanna teach our clients that just like going to the gym, they can train their nervous system daily and that will accumulate over six to eight weeks for them to see a significant difference. We don't wanna play down that we can quickly hack it to change it. In the Nervous System Certification course, I teach practitioners how to do this with their clients successfully using scripts, patient handouts that create light bulb moments, and also trauma sensitive sequencing. And when all of that comes together, it ensures that neuroplasticity is taking place. The fourth reason why coaches and clinicians struggle with nervous system regulation is because they don't have clear communication of complex concepts. When practitioners have clear teaching concepts and self-regulation resources, they can support their dysregulated clients without becoming overwhelmed themselves. It's like something clicks and they understand that their role is to provide this information for their clients, continue to be a regulating presence, but they don't need to jump in and rescue or fix. You will have better client engagement when you can explain clearly the why behind these complex neurobiological concepts and also why you're using the interventions that you are. Otherwise, your clients might actually think that nervous system work is a little bit woo-woo. This is what really helps your client become an active participant in their healing journey rather than just passively receiving information or care from you week to week. With the students who first come into our nervous system certification course, what I often hear from them is that they have the same struggles that I did when I first graduated from university. I would give my patients these big, long, lengthy explanations and I would see the confusion on their face. I would give them 22 exercises to do and they would do none. What we need as clinicians is simple systems so that we can educate our clients well. Now, the most effective practitioners that I know have a range of metaphors that they can use for the complex topics that they teach. One of my favorites is thinking of the nervous system becoming overprotective, almost like when you reverse the car and there is a sensor on the back that beeps when you get close to objects. Now with nervous system dysregulation or following chronic and traumatic stress, we can teach our clients that the nervous system has become overprotective. That in itself will change the way that our clients see themselves and can bring a reappraisal that leads to regulation. So we might say to them that the sensor on the back of the car has become overprotective and is now beeping when they're 10 or 20 feet away from an object. Our job through nervous system work is to recalibrate that sensor so it becomes accurate to the distance of where the object is, which is really the essence of what you're trying to do with your client. You're helping their nervous system recalibrate so that the activation inside of them matches what's happening outside of them. Without these analogies, your clients or patients may go home and when their family says, so how was your appointment? They can't remember or they feel completely overwhelmed and confused by what you taught them. What I saw was that 
clients and patients remembered the analogies, it was like a missing piece of the puzzle or a key turning, and they were able to make sense of what was going on for them and also explain that to their family. And finally, the fifth reason why coaches and clinicians struggle with nervous system regulation is because they can't track and measure the nervous system changes that their clients are experiencing. If you're a coach or a clinician that works with clients who are dysregulated, you need to learn to speak the language of the nervous system. And this is a language of sensations, emotions, body postures, gestures, urges, and actions. But you can also learn to hear the language of the nervous system through the words that your clients use to describe their experience. Now, one of the things that we teach in the Nervous System Certification course is that story follows state. So in the sympathetic nervous system state, you're likely going to hear a story of protection. And this might sound like, I have to. Something terrible is going to happen if I don't. There could be stories around blame or criticism from the fight energy or the mobilizing hurry that you hear when your clients tell you how they multitask or that there's never enough time. The story from the dorsal vagal state will sound different. If your client is in freeze, they might say to you, when I open my inbox, I see there's so much to do and I can't take any action. Or they might tell you about all the activation inside them, but they can't move forward. That feels like their feet are stuck in cement. When you learn to speak the language of the nervous system, you're really effective at tracking your client's experience. You can hear and you can also see it in their body. The other thing that you need is to be able to objectively measure your client's nervous system's progress over time. Now, often because we are working with feelings and sensations with the nervous system, your client's subjective experience may tell you, they might say things like, I feel terrible, I'm not sleeping, I'm having trouble with X, Y, or Z. But an objective measurement is what will help you track over time how things are doing as well. And this is really important because one of the reasons why practitioners doubt themselves so much is that a subjective experience may be, I still don't feel well, but what's actually happening are things like vagal tone is improving, gut health is improving, or inflammation is improving too. So we wanna have both those subjective and objective measurements to really see how our clients are doing. So these are the five things that coaches and clinicians need to have if they want to successfully integrate nervous system regulation into their practice. I'll pop some links below if you'd like to keep learning.